Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is a tag that I created last year, and that is the Gingerbread House tag. So I thought this would be a fun tag to do the day before Thanksgiving because gingerbread houses are some things that we do around this time of year, whether it's for Thanksgiving or Christmas or other holidays. And I had a lot of fun doing it last year, so I thought I'd just do it again this year. If you are interested in doing this tag, go ahead and do it. Consider this me tagging you to go right on ahead. I will have the questions down in the description below, so it'll make it easier for you if you want to. Otherwise, feel free to just answer any of these questions in the comments below. I would love to know what your answers are for some of these. So the first question is construction or walls. What is a book that had a good plot or a good beginning but ended up being kind of plain? And so I went with Wilder Girls by Rory Power. I thought the concept of this sounded really interesting, but then as the book was going on, it just seemed like it was missing something. Kind of like when you put up the walls and you haven't decorated them yet. So I think this is my walls of the gingerbread house this year. Question number two is the door. What is a good book to serve as an entryway to one of your favorite genres? And for this one, I am going to go with Lovely War. I love historical fiction. Uh, I haven't read it near as much, but I've been wanting to, hence why I recently made a video of historical fiction that I want to read. But I think this is a great gateway into the genre because it takes place during World War, which a lot of historical fiction does, um, but it's also romance and it's a war story, but it's also told from the perspective of the Greek gods. So there are so many elements to it that just intertwine really well together. So there's bound to be something about it that someone would like. Who doesn't read a lot of historical fiction. And then the third one for the construction section is the roof. What is the best final book in a series to top it all off? And this year for me it is The Dragon Tapestry. This is the third book in the Tea Dragon Society series. I'm pretty sure this is a trilogy. Um, it's not been confirmed if another book is coming out. Um, so as of now, to me, this is the final book in the series, and it is beautiful in every way, both the artwork, the story, the characters. I love it all. So this is, this is my roof, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous roof. All right, moving on to candy, and the fourth question is the peppermint swirls. What is a book with a lot of twists and turns? And I have to go with the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This book just kept me guessing. It was twisty. It was turny. It was like, oh, here's this solution. Oh, but wait, it's not what you expect. There is more. Let us now switch over to here. Oh, but wait, remember that one thing? Like, it just, it was kind of all over the place, which can be a good thing, but also can be a little bit of an annoying thing. Um, but no matter what, it fits the, the swirl um, of twisting and turning, so... I, and I did enjoy it. For the most part, I very much did enjoy this book. Number five is The Gumdrop. What is a book that is very generic or has a lot of tropes in it? And the book I've chosen may cause a little bit of controversy, but I've chosen Pumpkin Heads by Faith Erin Hicks and Rainbow Rowell um, just because I felt like this book wasn't anything too unique. Like, okay, I can't even say what the trope is because that'll be a spoiler for the book, but there are just so many things in here that was just kind of like, okay, that's kind of plain. Okay, yeah, no. Okay, that's predictable. Okay, that's kind of tropey. Okay, so, um, like, obviously, it's still a beautiful book and I love the artwork and it was just such a sweet read and it's a, like, it's a graphic novel. I enjoyed it, but I just, it just seemed like a gumdrop to me. Number six is Licorice, and that is the longest book on your shelf, and I'm pretty sure this hasn't changed from last year. Um, I don't think I've bought a book that is longer than this one, because it's a chunky fella. Um, it's a Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales edition. It's, it's tall. It's wide. It has how many pages? Like, it's over, it's over 650 pages, so I don't think I have anything page-wise that is longer than this so 
it's a chunker and I wonder if this will be the same answer next year because I I'm I'm intimidated by chonkers now um, unless it's an audiobook they intimidate me which is such a bummer because when I was younger I used to love thick long books <laughs> but yeah so it's still a complete fairy tale then moving on we have frosting and that is what is a book that holds one of your favorite genres together or the most underrated book um, you know something that is just kind of everywhere but you don't really truly appreciate it um, and actually I'm gonna go with the deadly education by Naomi Novik I think I think a lot of people think this book was good but I think it's great. <laughs> like, I feel like people appreciate it a little bit, but I don't think they appreciate it quite enough. Um, so it's a dark academia, which I think pretty much just is a subgenre, I mean, I think. Um, but it is fantasy, it's got magic, it's like a whole different, it's not a take on Harry Potter, but it's the whole idea of going to this magical school and learning spells. But it's, it's so different. Um, and so I think this is my frosting. Like it just, it holds together every element of dark academia and I think it should be more loved than it is. And I am so excited to read The Last Graduate. Oh my goodness. And then finally, the last question on this tag, question number eight, are the gingerbread men. So even though we build gingerbread houses and that's kind of the point and they're fun and they're decorative, Sometimes we still bake little gingerbread men and those can be fun to really accompany the houses. And so the prompt is, what is a book with great supportive characters? And this year I am going with The Labyrinth Lost, uh, which is part of the Brooklyn Bruja trilogy. It's the first one and this is by uh, Zoraida Cordova. And the, the fun thing about this book, so it centers around a family. So you very much get like the family supportive characters but it's just such a fun family like the three sisters are hilarious and you definitely get that feeling that there is that sisterly bond there in just as much the teasing but also the love and it's fun because each book in the trilogy follows a different sister so like you have a great uh, main character and then the next book they become a great side character and vice versa you have great side characters and then they eventually become great main characters so I, I'm cheating a little bit but I mean come on I, I loved this series um, like late last year early this year so that's what I'm gonna have to go with and that's the end of the tag so thank you all so much for watching Click subscribe if you want to see more videos by me. I post every Sunday and Wednesday. It is a new schedule that I am posting to. So hit the bell to be notified when I post so that you don't miss out. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you want to do the tag. Again, I tag you. Go ahead. Do it if you want to. Otherwise, comment down below any of your answers. And until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.